Everybody and welcome back to Starseed Chats. I have John Martin here with us today, and it is a very special episode because we have two professional CE5 experts, people who have been contacted by UFOs, who have documented a bunch of UFOs, and have built a just a very interesting relationship. So, um, yeah, John Martin, do you want to tell us a little bit about? So UFOs started showing up for you, and now you basically do CE5, which is human-initiated contact, like, every night. Um, and they always come for you. You have some beautiful footage, which we will go over here uh, shortly. But so how did this start for you? What was, like, your first couple, like, UFO experiences like? Hey, Lily, it's such a pleasure to be <laughs> with you today. Um <laughs> I'm a classically trained musician, so um, it's kind of a long story, but I had dinner with President Carter in Toledo, Spain, and we spoke about UFOs, and that gave me the impetus to try an experiment. If I thought if I would go out on my deck and play the music that I've played my whole life, I wanted to see if perhaps I would get a reaction from the universe, and almost immediately, these beautiful crafts started coming in. I would play my music and project thoughts of love and, and peace into the universe. And the very first craft that came in was a purple plasma craft in a bell shape with a pink ring that was rotating around the bottom of the, of the bell directly over my home after only two or three sessions of, of playing music with that specific intent. And it was, just absolutely amazing and that's really what got me started in um, what has become a daily practice for me of interacting with our star family wow that's beautiful what an amazing first um, experience and so you were kind of testing the waters and you had a little bit of an interest in ufos before but you don't have like a history of growing up did you ever see any ufos or anything like that only once my sister and i were driving into our neighborhood this is probably in the uh, mid 70s 
and a beautiful golden energy was crossing the street as we were turning into my neighborhood. And it was probably the size of um, like a minivan. It was pretty large. Mm. And wow. uh, that it was no mistaking what it was. It was just a beautiful golden solid uh, orb or kind of much bigger than an orb, of course, but mm -hmm. uh, just a higher dimensional craft that was flying through and but it would be many, many years until I saw my next one. Mm. And, um, but I've seen a few over the years. I, I was driving down the highway and there was almost like a soccer ball looking one. It was black and white and it was stretching and going back to a circle and then elongating. And that was very amazing. And actually, before I started my uh, thought experiment, I was driving a... A friend of mine, he's a World War II pilot, and we just returned from a, a trip to Washington, D.C., and I was, he asked for a, a bottle of wine before he went home to, to kind of relax, and I was driving up the street from his house, and there was a, like a 10-foot, almost like a, a glass ball with a red, uh, with a red ball inside of it. And that was truly amazing. Wow. Um, yeah. And so I've, I've seen a number of them over the years. <laughs> I was going to ask, so what are the different types of UFOs that you've seen? Like for me personally, I've seen some triangular diamond shaped craft that looked very like physical. Actually, I think I've only seen that like once um, with my own eyes. That was my first encounter. It was a huge like diamond shaped craft dark gray metallic and then lights going around it but then after that it appeared um a lot of like kind of balls or orbs came after that um just all different types even like sun orbs what i like to call that only things that only showed up on the camera but i didn't see with my own eyes so yeah i was gonna ask not any of like the the cliche flying saucers. I haven't seen any of those. How about you? I saw one yesterday, um, <laughs> a metallic uh, craft during the day, which is pretty rare. It was right under an airplane. I didn't have my uh, my uh, camera with me, but it was it was pretty amazing. So after the purple ones came, I kept playing my guitar and I was just projecting as, wow, this really seems to work. And then after that, um, I was walking my dog back into our, our neighborhood and over a courtyard were four craft, two sets of two in line, and they were spinning metallic craft. One was red, the other three were gray, mm -hmm. and they were just spinning silently. Mm -hmm. And that was amazing. I went to get, um, get my camera and I came back and they were gone. Of but, course. Uh, yeah. Um, but, I, I noticed in the courtyard, all the trees were burned. All the tops of the trees had been scorched, I guess, from the radiation from, from the craft. And, uh, I actually wow. kept a couple and I gave, I was going to give it to MUFON and they said, oh, that's nothing, but you know, that's just a natural occurrence. And I've learned over the years to just really kind of understand that other people may not, uh, take evidence as seriously as they should. So. I did take pictures of it and I have, I have pictures of, uh, of that. I sent you a zip file with a number of photographs. So maybe we can insert some at, at some mm -hmm. point. But, and then after that, Lily, I was playing again, the same ideas, just playing Bach and Ravel and Debussy and original pieces some jazz pieces and just projecting, you know, uh, so many CE5s, you're meditating where you're just kind of bringing in energies. I've found that if you project out your own energies, that's what the universe is truly interested in. Mm -hmm. And so when we when we project out what we love, then it's acknowledged and it's uh, honored by the uh, intelligences. So I was walking my dog back in to the neighborhood again. It was about three in the afternoon. And two impossibly large craft came. One was in the shape of a cross. The other was in the shape of a crescent. They were metallic at a 45 degree angle. Uh, 
way over the courtyard. Uh, they were the size of office buildings. Oh my goodness. Truly amazing. And I went in to get my camera and when I came back out in my mind, they said, please don't take our picture. We'll give something, we'll give you something you can take a picture of. And so I didn't run around the building like you would expect. I was just pretty much overcome by the experience. It was just mm -hmm. so incredible and moving. And a few days later, that's when I received my first aeroglyph which is what I call them. It was a beautiful heart shaped cloud that was, that was positioned uh, directly above the courtyard on the house across the, the way from the courtyard, the beautiful heart shaped cloud. I'm sure you've seen it. Um, I send it to people on their birthdays and, <laughs> and holidays. And when they're challenged with, with, uh, life events, I always send uh, the love from the universe that mm. is encapsulated in that beautiful heart shaped cloud. Mm -hmm. And they've given me many of those and you've received some heart clouds as well. Yeah, they, that was a big way that they started communicating with me. So I s started seeing UFOs left and right. And then shortly after I started getting the signs, I remember my first one that I ever got was a smiley face in the clouds. And I didn't notice it until um, I uploaded it uploaded it I was taking a time lapse multiple pictures and then I was like holy smokes there's like literally a smiley face in the clouds and you were the one who commented on that video and said that was meant for you that's a sign for you and that just absolutely yeah that just expanded my mind and blew my mind that that is a way that they will actually communicate with us I've had it was I mean you could see it was specific and it was created specifically for you and that's the universe acknowledging your beautiful energy and the work that you're doing is important to them as it is to us. And that's, you know, and the thing is it's discernment too. You have to recognize that they've done that. That's when, that's when you're able to take it to the next level. When you see that they've done that and you acknowledge that and you thank them and, and you're humbled and, and thankful that's when really magnificent things occur. Mm -hmm. And I've had um, actual faces of entities. I've had, uh, they've actually had my face as a cameo looking up at the park. They said, oh, that's you looking at us. Aww. And I'm on the video. I've got a little section on aeroglyphs and you'll see that. Aww, and so amazing. it's, the, the thing is that, they know us so well and we don't give them credit for being truly the family that they are they know us very well and and they they are us we are them mm -hmm. and when we recognize and acknowledge that uh, you know i think all of humanity will will rise mm -hmm. in, and ascend in, in a higher vibrational um, collective and it will be a it will be a paradigm shift for humanity yeah and definitely. I think, yeah and something you said that um they actually are us i was going to ask so who do you think did like whenever these ufos started popping up did you wonder like who they were and i wanted to ask if you know who they are what kind of feelings you get from that you see that's that's how our work collectively is so important what you're able to do and tap into the actual beings themselves uh, you know you have that gift where i you know i see the i can get their feelings and the emotions and all of the love that they send and they you know they're constantly um, demonstrating their how they care for us but you're able to actually see the entities and i mean i've had entities come to me recently uh, in a very magnificent way, but, um, you're going to have to tell me about that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's pretty crazy. It was just a couple of days ago. So, you know, I'm writing a book called the universe loves you. And I questioned the name. I said, could it be the loving universe? They said, that's not what we said. Is it? It's <laughs> the universe loves you. So that's the name of the book. Yeah. That's beautiful. And I, I'm on chapter 23. And 23 is a very important number to me. It's, it's a number that's resonated. I'm not a numerologist or anything like that, but 23 has always been an important 
number and it just turned out <clears throat> excuse me that uh the 23rd chapter is the chapter where i go into uh, all of the specifics on how i make contact and how mm -hmm. the reader will be able to um, bring their own unique energies mm -hmm. to uh, making contact and um that morning I was, I made my coffee and I put, I had three biscotti I took out of the jar, two chocolate and one lemon and put the jar back and there were only two there. So they took one and it was, um, this is a long story, but I have a very dear friend named Dr. Jonathan Reed. And if, if you don't know his stories, it's just an incredible interaction he had with an entity that came and there was his dog and and um his dog was killed unfortunately and and jonathan hurt the the entity but it was you know it was all really a mistake but he you know he calls him freddie and freddie has come back and has helped jonathan has actually saved him on an occasion and Jonathan asked if you would be okay if Freddie came to visit me and I said sure I'm not very much like that and, and we were we were actually down at the beach and I was projecting at night and I didn't really see anything which is unusual I normally am able to uh, film any numbers of craft but there was no activity and that's fine I just enjoy myself and we went uh, and you know went to bed and just when we lay down, maybe after about five minutes, there was a hiccup right next to the bed. Mm -hmm. And Karen said, did I, did I hear a hiccup? And, and so I wrote to Jonathan the next day and I said, completely random question, does Freddie hiccup? And they all got really excited. Of course he does. When he gets, when he's scared and he's in a new place, he'll hiccup. And so he's come to see me a number of times. And, and I think they were, these are the, he has golden beings that are kind of his overseers. And that's the being that actually came to me the day after Easter at the park. I've got pictures of that on the video as well. Mm -hmm. And so this is all connected, Lily. And so um, I took a break that, that afternoon because I was contemplating how best to write this chapter. And I, I, out front, I'm always kind of picking up trash. And I saw this on the, on the uh, sidewalk and I opened it up. I thought it was just a discarded card, you know, but it wasn't scratched and I scratched it all off. This one was $500 and this one was $10 and the number 23 is right there. Oh, wow. So they can take biscotti whenever they want. As well. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's so incredible. I really feel like that was a gift from our star family and in, in support of, of me, you know, telling this narrative and for that, uh, I'll, you know, I'm going to be on the proof is out there next month. I'm trying to get my book, um, on Amazon in time for it to, uh, you know, to be in place when people see the, uh, the videos they've licensed three of my my better videos I think so mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that so this is good timing as well and I thank you for the time today mm -hmm. yeah definitely so yeah that's really amazing uh, they can interact with us in many different ways they can and that's what I try to tell people also even if you don't see ships or UFOs don't be discouraged. Um, they can communicate with you and show you love in a number of ways, like signs and synchronicities or a scratch off ticket, <laughs> 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 which is really cool. It was, uh, I mean, that is so beyond chance. I mean, just to find one, but find the winner of, you know, that's on the exact same day that I'm putting down my thoughts on how I specifically make contact. It would, it's a coincidence. It was a really good one. That's all I can say. <laughs> I feel like whenever you start getting into this or start awakening to this, there's definitely no coincidences. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. It's yeah. And as you uh, raise your own uh, frequency, 
then the, you know the universe meets you and then you rise together and so the work that you're doing lily i you know i watch your work every week and you're doing such important work with um you know every sunday i, I make a point to to watch uh your you know your beautiful sound bowls and all of the uh you know all of the entities that you're connected with so i'm very impressed and very thankful for you oh thank you hmm. yeah uh yeah it kind of changed like before i was very much into documenting them and then it took like a whole different route and when i asked the ets what do you want me to focus on they showed me the singing bowls and said doing the live activations <laughs> and mm -hmm. i was like okay so i'm running with it um but that's really amazing the work that you are doing and capturing all of this amazing footage and have such a beautiful relationship with these beings showing that they are peaceful they are loving and helping to just capture footage you know some of that like proof some of that evidence and getting featured on tv shows that's incredible well thanks and you know i'm i almost can i consider it a ce6 at this point and i'm not sure if that's even a thing but um what i do is um it's not just uh catching them on camera but we interact uh, when they, uh, Lily, I'll have them, it's, it's on this video as well. They'll come in and they'll stage themselves and there'll be multiples and they will inter, you know, they will cross each other and, and, you know, interact. And if I, you know, on, on one point I said, you know, it's uh, just, I'm just filming ran randomly, but it's never random as a dear friends. And one drops in right at that very second within the little viewfinder of the camera and i've got a uh, psionics with a 3x magnifier on it so it's just a very tiny piece of the sky that i'm looking at and they're able to to uh oh their abilities are just incredible really and yeah. and they you know they acknowledge you know that i make a daily effort to uh, interact with them and it's an honor for me to share that with, with everyone. And so that's, that's kind of been my mission over the last few years is to, you know, to uh, share the reality and that we can, uh, we can have a relationship that's deep and meaningful and, and important. And, you know, I think I'm just a first step. I, when my book comes out, my great hope would be that others will try and then we'll take it in their own unique way and in places I would never even imagine. So that that's the hope that I have mm -hmm. uh, when people get the techniques and the confidence to go out and and know that they're safe and know that it's you know it's it's real and beneficial and it's it's a lovely, wonderful and fun experience. You know that very well. Yeah. It is. It's mind blowing. New surprises each and every week. <laughs> yeah, the uh, well, great one was I had a chevron of about thirty craft that came, you uh, know, you know, in a chevron shape. I had a camera set up. Um, I think it was um, Andromeda, and it was in that constellation, and it went right through. It's in this video that that I that I made for you. And then you and Tan had the same Chevron craft came on one of your sky watches. That's how we're connected. That's, that's not a coincidence. Again, that's, that's them honoring our work together. And that's, mm -hmm. that's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as you go, you start, you definitely, you start meeting others who are, that you're actually have a deeper connection with. <laughs> like me and you meeting <laughs> exactly there's, yeah there's a reason for that uh, yeah definitely i was on whitley streber's um unknown country he's always been a huge uh influence for me with communion and all of his work and a friend of mine um had a three-day um it's called the global peace tribe and I've been on there a number of times and he had a three day event on contact and he'd seen my videos. I'd played them on his show a number of times. And 
he asked me to be on one of the nights and I saw that Whitley was going to be on there. And I said, Oh, please let me be on the night that he's on. I'd just like to say what a great influence he's been on me. And they chose to show my videos at the beginning of the, of the uh, show. And immediately Whitley says, I want you on my show and I want to interview you. And he's become a very dear friend. And, and it's, it's, you know, the, our, our worlds are widening and it's encompassing such a large group of people. Now that's what, you know, we need a, a critical mass that, that see and accept this and, and integrate it. Then, you know, wonderful things, absolutely incredible things are available to us that we can't even imagine right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Meeting our star families and making peaceful contact is the next step. People want to, some people want to ask, you know, when are the ETs or UFOs going to come down to save us? If they believe, you know, that they actually still, you know, actually exist. Um, but we've got to do the work um, and, and just take, take the first step. And, well, a lot of these UFOs and star beings are just a lot of people are having just sudden spontaneous awakenings or having encounters and then now that's kind of opening them up to this but yes i believe we all are going to meet our star families we all have galactic family we're like the inside guys here on earth um helping from like the first person perspective to bring this in and help you know to bring peace and harmony and then these ufos that keep dropping hints they're actually you know our cosmic families we're collaborating with them we may just not remember it but as we go along we begin to remember and yeah peaceful contact and a lot of people are actually starting to become really interested in it making I, contact i agree and and you know i i think there's uh a fine tuning that we can do when we're um and and i've noticed you and tan do that very carefully is um you know so many of the ce5 they you know they there's whooping and hollering and lasers and all this other stuff but i don't you know that that kind of gives an other uh mentality to the to our star family when i see them they're my friends it's a pleasure to see you. Thank you for coming to see me. And when I have a problem, I share it with them. When I have a wonderful thing, I, you know, of course I share that as well. In the mornings after a, any session, I'm outside. I, I thank them for coming to see me. When I'm wa outside walking my dog, I'm always talking to them. They may not, you know, be there at the moment, but they hear me. And and I know that they uh, they appreciate that. You know, we take the time to interact with them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the morning, I haven't seen a metallic craft in a couple of months, but it was a beautiful metallic craft that was going by. And uh, I've had a beautiful, um, like a little powder blue egg that went by. Uh, it was gorgeous. It was just a lovely thing. Uh, you know, I've had a friend of mine, Victoria Lillenquist, is... Uh, she has Merkaba that she interacts with and they'll sit in the same spot for long periods of time. And, and there's, um, you know, the sacred as well as the secular with, with so much of this. And so she has, uh, saints and, you know, and I've had, um, religious symbols in the sky. I've had entities that came. I had one, well, let me finish with Victoria, but she was, um, we were talking on the phone at my little park where I see all most of uh, my encounters. And he said, why don't you please send something that John can, can photograph. And as soon as she said that this craft went from uh, the East horizon directly over to the West horizon, it was green. It was rotating on its axis like a fish and it went directly overhead. And this is interesting. What what they often will do is they send a message to you. Oh, this isn't important. You can take a picture next time. Mm -hmm. And so you have to kind of um, move through that. And I was able to get one tiny picture while it was exiting. But um, 
I mean, this was a request over the phone and they heard that. So, I mean, it, it, the level of interaction, I think, is limitless when once we once we really start tapping into to our uh, extended family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Things can happen instantaneously. Yeah. And you mentioned a good point of asking. That's like the number one thing. I feel mm -hmm. like let starts it is asking them for a sign. Don't get upset if you just don't see something in, you know, the first try. And you say it was like your sec second session playing music where you saw one. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I played guitar out on my deck for years, but never with that specific intent mm -hmm. to, you know, project music. Uh, you know, I, with the dinner with President Carter, um, we were there. A friend of mine has a guitar factory and we were signing labels for guitars that were destined for the Carter Center. And we've raised a lot of money for, for the works of the Carter Center. And over dinner, we were... The person next to me brought it up. I didn't. He was asking him about UFOs and he was very open about it and told of his experience in South Georgia. And, and I told him about the experience with my sister at the time. That was the only one that I really had with a golden, beautiful energy. And he was very open to it. And, and, uh, between that and close encounters of the third kind where music was used as a communi communication tool, I used both of those as my impetus to actively try to contact. And so when I put the two things together, that's when it was like it unlocked a key or key unlocked, uh, uh, you know, the ability to make that happen. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, so often I, I really think, you know, even if you don't get anything and I was just writing about that today, that, um, it's acknowledged in, in the cosmos and there is a process being made at that time. And it might take, you know, it could, I don't know how long it could take. It might be instant. I mean, now it's instantaneous that, you know, space and time don't really apply here. They, they can pop in immediately. Once you start, uh, once I sit down, they're often there waiting for me mm -hmm. and which is always lovely, but, you know, with the purple craft with the pink ring, I think that was specifically curated by the intelligences for me. It had a beautiful feminine energy to it. And uh, that was their response to what I offered to them. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I think it's going to be individually curated for each person, which is spectacular. And, you know, it's infinite in, in the possibilities of what, what can happen when masses of us start trying to do this and you know and successfully make contact yeah 100 percent. like with me um astrophotography and photography was was one of my big keys um i would go out to make contact i started doing that during sunset i would go out to film sunset and then um, sometimes I would go out just looking for them, you know, kind of waiting for them to appear. But it's like as soon as I kind of took my mind off of it for a second, the intention was there. And I started playing around with my camera and getting into a flow state. Just relax and enjoying, um, you know, the sunset. Then they would show up and they'd be like, like, ding. Okay, that's how you do it. Getting into a relaxed flow state, doing mm -hmm. something creative, being in, you know, that higher vibrational state. Um, and that could be different for everybody. Like with me, photography and stargazing and with you, music. That is, I could not have said that better. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely correct. We, every one of us have a unique ability, uh, and we all know what that is. And that's billions and billions of very unique personalities. Each one is totally unique. And when we present that to the universe, you know, if, if you're a painter, paint, go outside and paint, um, with a specific thought of sharing with the universe. Don't, don't internalize, externalize and share 
outwardly what you what you love and what's important to you just like when you're meditating outside and you the craft come in because they they can hear you they see you and they can feel you and that's that's the that's the important aspect of this i think mm -hmm. um in 2019 this was easter monday which is the day after easter i was walking into the park during the day and um just right in this clearing was an entity um in the sky and um it was just an amazing thing to see i had my camera and i took five pictures of it uh, it'll be in this video as well um, but lily it was still early in my ability to integrate these experiences and i turned away while the being was still there and there's you know there is uh, something within us that you know it's hard to see and, and incorporate something clearly from another dimension you could see the portal off to the side where it had come through and um i remember the rest of the day i was just trying to understand why i'd done that and i went back to the park that night to interact as i do and as beautiful golden energy dropped down the treetop level and i apologized i said i'm really sorry that i didn't give that beautiful energy the the time it deserved and the golden energy just expanded exponentially understanding that this is difficult for us this this is something that is a process and they acknowledged and honored that and that's just another step in the uh, evolution of of our own souls how we accept this and, and grow with the experience and so I, I would highly recommend everybody to to go out and and, and try mm -hmm. to do that themselves right yeah and it is some people will say that you know they would like to meet an et face to face but it would be very shocking they're easing us into it and i feel like mm -hmm. they won't give you more than you can handle um so with you you saw that it was a little bit out there but you know you didn't freak out or anything um and, and they showed you compassion um and understanding so that's just really beautiful some people are afraid that um you know it may be something too much or too, or too weird would happen sometimes it, it does but i feel like the universe gives you you know what you can handle when the time is right as well they have been exactly i mean they have been like that for me um from the very beginning when the big the cross and crescent and another point on that lily is when the cross and crescent shape came and then the heart cloud there was a there was a number of months where I didn't see anything, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd actually in that in the meantime I reported it to MUFON and and they came out and did a report and it turned out that CNN was doing a a piece on uh, UFOs for Inside Man, which is a series that they had with Morgan Spurlock, the uh, Super Size Me guy, and. They asked if I wanted to be on television. I said, sure. And, and so I, you know, I, I re, re, uh, counted my experience on that show and that it aired and I hadn't seen uh, uh, anything for a while. And I thought, oh man, I think I've offended them. I wonder if, you know, I made a mistake by doing that. But as it turns out, that wasn't the case because I would be taking Bodhi out at night and i'd see these lights flying by me and i really didn't notice what they were and then they started flashing at me mm. and i thought oh wow they're back so i got a adirondack chair and sat out in the courtyard and two of them came and one of them peeled off in front of me and i just started waving to it and it went Goosh, like that and i waved at it again and it did it a second time and then a third time and and so I think they were letting me integrate that experience, that that huge, beautiful cross and crescent shaped craft. It turns out that that is a very common um, crop circle shape. Just a few months prior in Wilshire, England, there's a perfect cross and crescent shape um, 
uh, crop circle and it's wow. yeah and I, i've spoken with people um about this and and they they feel that it was the, the intelligence is saying that you know two of our major religions should be connected through love and that's what the heart-shaped cloud it emulated so it was a larger message that they were giving to me that's being recognized mm -hmm. so it's not only a personal message but it's a, a message to all mankind and they can use our own experience to share that on a large scale so you know there's a bigger bigger picture they're they're very um they think through their actions very well i think oh yeah definitely i get the sense they're like a, a thousand steps ahead of us <laughs> <laughs> yeah they already know um beautiful beautiful let me see if i so for what are some of the biggest things that you have learned from this whole experience? I think the biggest thing is that we all can do it. I think is, is to me the, the, the biggest, cause there's nothing special about me. It's just that I've tried just like you've tried, you've made the effort to do it. And so they, they are showing, uh, you know, the, humanity at large that if you make the effort we will come and we will interact with you and we will have you know lovely energies that you can share and and in the, just the potential this is just a point on the curve for for both of us i think you know we're we're we have a long journey ahead and it's it's just been a magnificent adventure so far mm -hmm. yeah definitely we have no idea what <laughs> the potential of of all of this, but it's going to be quite amazing. Um, and I wanted to also ask for people like so when it comes to seeing UFOs, you've seen some really crazy looking UFOs, very unique uh, UFOs. But for kind of the average person, what would be some tips? where you can identify if that's a ufo or not that you're seeing in the sky like against like planes or satellites yeah when um i have different rankings that i just use um really i probably have three or four terabytes probably more than that now of of just ufo videos that i've taken literally thousands of them now and so I, I rank them in, um, you know, hierarchy of, of interactions. And when there, when there's more than one that, that interact, that's, that's pretty high on my, on my list. When the, when it's clearly a craft and they, they change direction and they interact with each other, that's, that's a high one too. I had a, a luminal craft that came in and and it corrected its attitude twice as it was flying through. I could feel that it was coming and whoa, there it is. And you can see just a beautiful, um, um, it's almost a plasma type, but, um, buddy, stop. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, and also when, um, people will, will often say oh those are just satellites well when they're on this side of the cloud it can't be a satellite right. and so uh, you know there's and so the thing is if you can't um if you can't um absolutely yeah if you can't absolutely state that it's you know it's something well you just chalk it off as you know one more experience and wait for the next one because that's the thing uh I think when people say, oh, I saw one 30 years ago and never saw one since. Well, they they were given the opportunity, but they didn't um, capitalize on that by going and, and trying to interact again. So just realize that they will come back as often as you want them to. Mm -hmm. And so if you just kind of push it out of your mind, then they'll, you know, then they'll they take that as a no. Mm -hmm. But when you embrace it and when, when you see that yeah, they will come back on a regular basis. We agree. I, I go to the park about nine o'clock every night. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and we have an agreement to meet there in that little tiny bowl of sky and that's the canvas that they use mm. and so that's that's what i'm i'm doing it at the moment and i'm trying to finish my book and then we'll just see where it goes from there yeah well i think it's it's definitely divine timing people are you know becoming more interested in this and what would be some and we'll share your video in just a second of all of the of some of the different ufos that you've captured but what would you say well i have two questions what are kind of the benefits of making contact and developing a relationship with these star beings and then my other question was do you have i know you have a a, a book coming out with on how to make contact but what would be some quick tips for somebody to get started so like what are the benefits of making contact and then what are some quick tips i think the benefit is it it um emphasizes the importance of the individual that you are important to the universe even if you've been um, maligned in this society or dismissed that is not the case with the universe the universe honors each of us if we have a challenge if we have things that we're you know not terribly proud of even you know if as long as you bring your your current mind and spirit into alignment with the universe then, then it is acknowledged and so use that great resource that is untapped to it it broadens your uh, experience it it uh it makes you realize that we're much larger than just the the small individuals that we often will think of as ourselves and so what i the techniques i would say is go outside introduce yourself specifically to the universe and say hi this is um john martin i'm the guitarist that's played for you so many times this is what i would do early on i don't really have to do it anymore but sometimes i do i'm friends with president carter and and uh dr greer and and whitley striver and alfred lambermont weber and lily nova and, and i just go through all the people that are important to me that are doing this work and i said i would i would so love to see you tonight and i go through the different kinds of craft that have come the beautiful golden energies the the really fast beautiful craft the beautiful two clearly there's there's one type of craft there are two that come in and they're they fly in formation and they come to me very often and they and they will flare in front of me so that I know it's them. And, mm. and so I thank all of the different energies that come. And then I just start playing my music in my mind and I sit quietly. Mm -hmm. And I've got, um, I, I recently bought a drone and I put a drone up next to a star. And they'll come in and they'll flare right in front of it. Uh, and oh, so wow. you, it's really amazing. And so that's on the video as well at the end. So. Um, there's many techniques that I'm trying to use and just to help the interaction so that we can, um, they're very cooperative and they think it's fun. That I've got a little five inch drone that'll put two or 300 feet up in the air and they'll buzz it and all kind of fun things. So wow. that's what I would say. Share what you love, share who you are mm -hmm. and be open and grateful and thankful and be consistent. Mm -hmm. that would be my suggestion yeah all really really great suggestions definitely and you don't have to put like a whole whole lot of time into it mm -mm. Let's start off with 10 minutes per night or t 10 minutes sure. per day you know i was you know if instead of watching an hour of television go outside and spend an hour enjoying just the magnificence of the night sky and the cool breeze Lily, another important thing are the hawks that are around me. They are so connected with our star family. I was, but I was on a, on way to see um, Prince's um, Purple Rain at the Fox Theater, and so I took my dog out to the courtyard, and there were two hawks circling very tightly right over the courtyard, and right in the center was a double ball 
a red metallic double ball that appeared right in the center of these two hawks and then they all flew away together and out of the park there's they have their roost is right behind me and so they see when i'm connecting with the universe because they can see so much better than we can and they're soaring all day long and so they are they have a deep connection with our star family i've had a metallic craft come in and here they come i've got that actually on video and uh, that's gonna my book is an ebook so it's gonna have hyperlinks so it'll go to all of the youtube i also have private videos that will be only for the uh, purchasers of the book itself and so it's 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 a really fascinating subject and i i think it's uh it's really worth our time and mm -hmm. effort yeah definitely and something that the ets told me as i was whenever i was out doing a lot of ce5 and filming them there are frequencies and light codes in that footage that can affect you like it's channeled through our footage through the videos through the photography absolutely you can feel it mm -hmm. but i but i will say when you see it in real life just the flood of loving energy that's sent is so magnificent and it's so life affirming and mm -hmm. positive and you know there's so much that is being bombarded on how terrible they are and how we should be afraid of them and it's, it's i think that's a terrible disservice to what what is potentially a you know something that could really advance the uh the future and potential of humanity yeah. so i uh, you know i i try to do show this other side i know i recognize everything not everything in the universe is positive but when you're i feel very strong that when you're outside and you're and you're projecting positive thought and love into the universe it attracts that same frequency and it repels any other kind of frequency so i've i've never had any any um, doubts or fear in any way i've just enjoyed the experience and I've been doing it every night for over 10 years now. Every night that's clear. If it's cloudy or rainy, I don't, of course, I just, I don't. But pretty much every clear night I'm out there for about an hour. It doesn't take that long. You're exactly right about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, something that's really key that you said was that it's all about vibration and frequency. And you attract what you put out. So just getting yourself in the high vibrational state, a positive, blissful, relaxed, peaceful, loving state, and that's what you will attract. Um, and I also tell people to be specific. You know, just say that you are looking to connect with, you know, loving, loving beings. You know, so you could also put that kind of safeguard up. But, um, yeah, very beautiful positive experiences very life-changing transformative and even the the love that i feel from them whenever i see them it just makes me cry it is just a very pure feeling that i feel like as humans we go through a lot of crap here on earth and there's a lot of negativity so connecting with them is like it's it's just amazing <laughs> It's hard to explain, but it's, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> it is. I was, I, I'm so moved by that. And, and yeah, absolutely. Your work is a great inspiration to me. And I, I wanted to share that with you because it's important and it's, it's vital and, and life affirming again. And, um, I did want to say I was, um, sitting in meditation and just allowing, um, I don't do that as much as I should. I, I know you probably meditate more than I do. My meditations are when I'm playing guitar. So I, I get in input with that as well. But I was specifically meditating and I just kept getting peace to all, peace to all over and over and over and over. And, and so I wrote a, a piece of music called Peace to All. And it's, it's the, uh, 
the soundtrack behind the video that that I provided for you. I'll, I think there's a couple pieces, but yeah, that's that was given to me by them also. That's beautiful. Yeah, they'll give you a lot of um, inspiration as you connect with them, or just the, in the universe in general. Um, a lot of inspiration. They can help you create really magnificent and beautiful things. So that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. I wanted to also ask, do you have any upcoming projects coming up? You mentioned your footage is going to be featured in, in another show and your book. What kind of, um, you want to share a little bit about that and if there's anything else upcoming that you're looking forward to? Yeah, the, um, the new season of The Proof is Out There will be in September and uh, they uh, gave about an hour's interview with the producers of that show. So I'm not sure how much uh, I will be on that particular show, but they've licensed three uh, videos, which is more than they've really licensed from anyone before. So um, I, I hope that they will do a, a, as good a job as my friends at uh, Paranormal, Paranormal Caught on Camera, because they did a lovely a lovely piece, I thought, on on my work. So I have that. And then I have the book that I want to have out in tandem with, with the, uh, cause that's a, you know, that's a large audience that will be seeing that show. It comes on directly after ancient aliens. So they have a, a large viewership. So I'm, uh, excited about that. And right now I'm, I'm really just concentrating on getting the book done. And I think there's going to be a, uh, making contact, um, show with my friends over at the global peace tribe um in september 9 through 11 i believe i think whitley's going to be on that as well so um i think that's basically where i'm at now i'm just trying to get the book finished it's yeah it's been a lot more work than i'd anticipated but i think it's going to turn out really well oh yeah i mean i bet i've been wanting to write a book i used to write stories growing up so now no. i know yeah and and i've wanted to write a book um, and just recently got the, the hint in the last like six months, they showed me a book, you're going to write a book. And I'm like, oh, but also that's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. You absolutely can do it. It's all happening in you know, divine timing, but yes, it is. It is some work, but, um, I'm looking forward to yours and uh whenever it comes yeah. out do you have kind of have an estimate you're just sometime soon because i can add the link i could go back and add the link in the description so if yeah i watching this later you check the description for a link to the book right yeah i i'm doing the um i'm finishing the text this week um i'm sending it to whitley and get it set up as an ebook initially so that you can just um download it on your phone or your kindle and that way you can you know within the chapters there are hyperlinks and you can just jump back and forth and there's videos and pictures and all kind of fun stuff so i'm um, yeah. trying to trying to use this new technology uh, not new but uh, you know it's an emerging te technology for for book uh you know, for kind of an expanded view of, of what I'm working on. So that's, that's where I'm at right now. Beautiful. Well, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> yeah. You'll be the first to get one. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your beautiful footage with us and your beautiful story. Um, closing words, I would say, you know, take this in everybody and hopefully this inspires you to want to go out and make contact for yourself and appreciate just, I don't know, the beauty and the potential of it. Um, the universe really loves you just like John's book. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully said. It was such a pleasure to be with you, Lily. Thank you for having me on your wonderful show. Awesome. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.
is another very beautiful snow. so wonderful thank you hey my friends hey beautiful ones hey gorgeous friends airplane going by that's kind of cool thank you lovely ones you're so awesome thank you wow look at you go that's wonderful we're really moving Thank you, gorgeous ones. Hey. All right, through the center of both of those. Now that was the coolest thing ever. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. Thank you, my friends. How absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Hey, my dear friends. Hey, gorgeous ones. You're so wonderful. Thank you, sweet friends. Thank you, beautiful ones. Absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous ones. Thank you, my dear friends. So beautiful. Have a lovely night. Thank you. Hey, my dear friend. So beautiful. My goodness, you're so beautiful tonight. Wow. Oh, that is great. Hey, beautiful one. My goodness. Gorgeous. <laughs> Wonderfully done. Good as well. Love you. That was perfect. You're so incredible. How wonderfully done, beautiful one. How absolutely incredible you are. Thank you, Oh, there's my friends. Oh, there's two. Oh, how gorgeous. Wow. So awesome, friends. Beautifully done. Wow, that was great. Thank you, sweet friends. You're so awesome. Absolutely great. Hey, sweet friend. So amazing. Whoa, y'all are doing it together. Whoa, I'm going to follow this one. <laughs> that was so amazing. Thank you, beautiful hearts. Absolutely great. Beautifully done. Thank you. Gorgeous. Yeah. Hey, my friend. Hey, lovely one. It's so good to see you. Oh, you went this way, too. How wonderful. Wonderfully done, friends. Thank you. Gorgeous. Just absolutely amazing. Look at that. Thank you, gorgeous ones. My gracious. I'm really doing it tonight. Thank you. That is the most amazing thing ever. Thank you, lovely ones.
Oh, wow. You did it again, friends. I love y'all. Thank you. Thank you for that. You did it. You absolutely did it. Thank you. Thank you, beautiful ones. Wow. Thank you for doing it again for me, sweet friends. Amazing. Thank you, gorgeous ones. Thank you, my dear friends. So incredible. Thank you, loveliest. Wow. There's my friend. <laughs> hey, beautiful one. Hey, look at you turning. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you, beautiful one. Wow. You are the greatest. Hey, sweet dear friend. That was magnificent. Thank you, dear one. Could you turn it so beautifully, friends? Hey, hey, gorgeous. Thank you, friend. So beautifully done. Thank you. Whoa, that was very fast. Here, my friends, gorgeous. Beautiful, friend. Oh, I caught you. How wonderful. Thank you, beautiful one. I was hoping I would see you tonight. Well done, sweet friend. Beautiful. Oh, look at you go. You are so awesome. My super fast friends. You too. Whatever you wish. Hey, there we are. Hey, beautiful ones. Perfect. We've done. Thank you. Or just. Hey. Hey, loveliest. Hey, my friends. Hey, beautiful ones. Beautiful too. Hooray. My beautiful two came today too. Thank you, gorgeous one. Mine too. Hey friends. That was a wonderful. Hey. Hey sweet ones. Hey my dear friends. Y'all are so awesome. Hey, beautiful ones. Hey, my sweet friends. Gorgeous. Hey! Oh! How wonderful. Hey, friends. Hey, beautiful ones. How lovely. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Thank you, lovely ones. Thank you.
beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Very quiet. Whoa, what was that? Right there. Gorgeous. There's a craft for sure. Thank you.